Susie and the Us? Seven is the best. It'll do. The dodgy dossier. 53 plays 24. Susie, what have you in your wonderful origins of words? What have you for us today? I have more silent letters, Nick, because um, yesterday I was uh, talking about this, the K's that we used to have, the hard K's in English, which we took from all the Germanic invaders um, that had come to Britain around the 5th century. So we had knots and committing and knees and knechts and knights and things. Um, so today I'm going to talk about some other silent letters, and I'll start with the B, uh, the silent B that we get in things like debt and doubt. Um, those go back to 16th century scholars, and um, I mentioned quite recently how there was a big drive around this time to um, make English more classical, so to make it more refined, a little bit more like Latin and Greek, um, and not just more refined, but more predictable as well, so easy to learn, because um, Latin and Greek are sort of quite smooth in terms of their um, endings and their plurals, etc. Um, and probably a little bit of showing off as well amongst all these scholars. So they decided that doubt, which had previously been about D-O-W-T or D-O-U-T, um, deserved to be because the Latin for doubt was dubitum. Same for debt, it was debitum. And so they put the B in there, but they didn't suggest we change our pronunciation. They just liked the B for the spelling because it looked more Latinate. Um, likewise, Sam got an L, goes back to the Latin Salmo, and Solemn got an N, it didn't have one before. The Latin was solemnis. Um, so that accounts for a lot of the silent letters that we have in English. But some of them were real just serendipity, really, or um, accidental or even hiccups. Um, the H in ghost, for example, we owe entirely to William Caxton, who standardised a lot of our spelling in English and was hugely influential. He did very, very good things. Um, but he learnt his trade in Flanders and in Bruges. Um, when he came over to England to set up his printing press, he didn't have enough typesetters, so he brought some over from Flanders where he'd been working. They were Flemish. The uh, Flemish for a ghost is geest with an H, and so they stuck one in because it looked more familiar to them. And we've been left with the result ever since. Um, and finally, the G in gnat. Nothing to do with Latin, nothing to do with Germanic. That is an old English word, and the G would have been pronounced um, when it was first used in the days of King Arthur. So it would have been a gnat which I would love to bring back. So with all this confusion going on, I think we should give ourselves a big pat on the back for knowing how to spell anything at all. <laughs> Thank you so much. 53, plus 24. And Lena, your lessons again. Start with a consonant again. Thank you, Lena. D. And another